Uh, good evening. It's 535 on December 13th, 2017. It is the monthly meeting of the Urbana Human Relations Commission. Could we please have a roll call? Francis Rigberg Baker. Here. Carol Bradford. Here. Lisa Mosley. Here. Daniel Larson. Here. Catalina Thomas. Peter Resnick. Here. Stacy Burnett. Lolita Dumas. Here. Samuel Bindham. And Brianna Donald. Here. Uh, okay, thank you. Um, Brianna, so nice to have you. Uh, we have not had a student representative on this commission for quite some time, so we are so excited to have your voice uh, uh, here to uh, somewhat sort of, sort of represent um, youth, not, not putting that burden on you, but um, <laughs> we were wondering if you might, wouldn't mind just uh, introducing yourself for a moment or two. Tell us a few things about yourself. Um, I'm Brianna Donald. I go to Urbana High School, and I'm very involved into a lot of things. I'm an African American club, student senate. Um, I also do like a lot of things uh, outside of the community. So like I do like principal scholars and other things. <coughs> also, this up like last summer, I had an internship for Senator Scott Bennett, which was amazing, and. Yeah, I'm just an outgoing person, and I like to talk and just, you know. Welcome. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you so much, and welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Um, I'd you. like to add to uh, what Brianna had to say about herself. Um, she was chosen in the last couple of days as one of our MLK Award recipients. Oh. <laughs> Very impressive. She, she will be receiving the Peace and Nonviolence uh, Youth Award for, uh, during the program on the 12th of January. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Alrighty, um, looking over tonight's agenda, um, are there any additions, edits, or corrections that need to be made? If not, is there a motion to approve? Um, I'll move approval with one small change. Um, I noticed that our discussion of Growmark is under public participation, and just to make sure we have enough time for um, those folks to present, maybe let's move them under old business. So moved with that uh, minor change. All right. Is there a second? I second. Any uh, final discussion? Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Oppose the same. Thank you. Looking over the minutes um, from our October 11th meeting, um, as we did not have a member uh, a meeting in November, are there any uh, additions, edits, or corrections that need to be made? If not, is there a motion to approve? So I did want to note, um, and we are we one behind on minutes, or so there were several occurrences of me appearing as chair and several occurrences as Dan appearing as chair. And was it the case that I chaired the whole meeting or chaired part of it, or I have no memory of this? <laughs> you chaired the meeting. From beginning to end. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> there is at least one occurrence of Dan's name in there someplace. Okay. We'll take a look at it. In and the if you would list me as vice chair instead of co-chair. Okay. Um, just um, <clears throat> title in the uh, minutes. But other than those changes, uh, move approval. Is there a second? Second. Uh, any final uh, catches? Okay. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed the same. <laughs> Excuse me. All righty. Um, our first, uh, our next item of business is public participation. Maybe. Okay. Welcome. We're glad to have you here. Uh, so then we can move to old business, and we're we're very happy to welcome a representative from Growmark. Um, sorry to spring that on you. Um, if, if you could uh, welcome. So thank you so much for coming in. Um, please, and we, uh, if you could take a moment to introduce yourself, uh, we'd be grateful and. Uh, um, we might have some questions for you uh, yeah. throughout and possibly at the end as well. So, Of course. Thank you. Welcome. Do I need to do anything to turn this on? Uh, is there a green light? Uh, it's green. Okay. You're live. Yep. You're okay. Okay. Um, my name is Kristen Koch. I am our Affirmative Action Equal Employment Opportunities Analyst at Growmark, Inc., based in Bloomington, Illinois. Um, but I am here representing Align IFS, which is headquartered in Urbana, Illinois. So I think we have um, back to 2010 was the furthest back I could find been submitting EEO data to the city of Urbana for um, some business we do with the arborist and on the fuel side and so we have been doing that pretty consistently only been receiving six month provisional approvals so was asked to kind of come and just talk more about some of our good faith efforts and what we're doing to try to 
increase the diversity of our workforce. So I welcome any suggestions or questions that you have because we, we're really trying, um, but unfortunately we're just not seeing a lot of um, kind of results of our work just being in the agriculture industry. There is kind of still that stigma. You know, we tend to be more on the less diverse side, so. Again, thank you for coming yeah. So I have um, prepared just kind of a packet of additional good faith efforts of things that we've done that I was going to leave with the commission um, at the end just for additional review. But something new we've done this year is we have updated our entire um, recruiting marketing brochure to be less ag focused, more just um, millennial focused just to try to kind of entice a more diverse applicant pool. So that's something new that we've done to try to um, kind of increase those numbers. We also, um, which I've already submitted to the council, but we have an EEO policy and an EEO statement that is updated every couple years and signed by our CEO just to kind of um, show his support of it. And we have launched this past year that we have a commitment by the end of 2018, all of our supervisors at Align AFS will go through what we call kind of our connecting with others or diversity and inclusion training as well. We also do quite a bit with the IDES office within the state of Illinois um, and then locally within the Urbana area in our territory for Align AFS. So Align AFS is headquartered here in Urbana, but we span a four, I think actually now five county area. So while we have a home office here for Alina, we only have about 30 employees here in Urbana. The rest span throughout our, um, the core territory. But we do quite a bit with IDES. We attend their fairs regularly. We do a lot with the Goodwill offices um, here and then a lot in Peoria as well. So we have a good relationship with those and we put all of our jobs out on various compliance boards as well. Do you want me to keep going? Please, please. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Sorry. Um, so yeah, I think kind of the point for us to come is just kind of talk through what everything that we're doing. So like I mentioned, we do training for all of our supervisors. We have an internal site um, that is a reference for our HR representative at Align IFS. I do sit in our Bloomington office, but I kind of oversee all of the outreach for all of our um, different retail division and subsidiaries throughout Iowa, Illinois, Wisconsin, New York, and Pennsylvania. Um, but we do have a website that is dedicated with outreach information and resources for them to try to um, help in some of that outreach to get more of that diverse applicant pool. Um, like I said, we have an EEO statement that's signed every couple years by our CEO. We also have on our um, intranet, our kind of company intranet, a supervisor resource page which has any sort of questions or resources for supervisors that might come up. Um, we also do a training with them. We have a diversity and inclusion website um, externally facing so candidates can see our commitment to that. We also have recently done a lot with um, veterans and, and individuals within the military. We have a pretty robust benefits package for those individuals. Um, we do a lot with Illinois Job Link um, and we have added our EO language on all of our job descriptions that we post as well, which I know is a requirement. So. Pardon me for one moment. It, can I ask Peter? a question? Yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit about the types of jobs you have available, um, what sort of workforce you've got, and how much turnover there is in general? Yep. So the current positions that I would say um, a majority of the positions we hire for are seasonal. So they're going to be laborers, they're going to be applicators, operators, CDL drivers. So they do require a specific skill set. Um, usually there's some sort of um, CDL requirement, not only that, but a hazmat and tanker endorsement. Um, a lot of times we're going to need a pesticide license, a forklift oper operator license. Um, so those are a majority of the positions we post for. Occasionally we'll have some more admin type positions, but we have relatively low turnover in our Align IFS office that's here in Urbana. Um, so it's mostly going to be those seasonal type positions that we're looking to fill. And I did just do a quick poll before I came, but we have an energy sales specialist open and then a tire shop laborer open right now in Urbana. And then a driver, a CDL driver. Yeah. Yep. So because we um, 
use an ATS, an applicant tracking system, all of our jobs initially go to that. So if you go to growmark.com slash careers, you're going to find all of our jobs on that. We do utilize a scrape, so a lot of our jobs are scraped onto Indeed. And then we use a third-party vendor, localjobnetwork.com, that scrapes all of our jobs to various um, local outreach contacts and national diversity boards. We have traditionally done a lot of newspaper advertising, but we are trying to um, kind of go away from that because we find that those, it's A, getting costly, and B, people aren't just checking newspapers as often. So we've done a lot with LinkedIn and Facebook marketing as well to try to reach the, the younger generation. And then occasionally, if needed, which we try to steer clear of, but we'll do like a Craigslist ad. Okay. The gorgeous brochure. Yeah. <laughs> Very colorful. Yeah. Who is that distributed to? Where is it distributed to? Mm -hmm. And the reason I'm asking that question is I'm wondering if it's put in locations where there may be more diverse individuals who will see it yep. and have access to it. Yeah, um, so I would say this is the first, um, we probably went live with this, oh, beginning of spring, and the first kind of rollout with it was at our university level, so at a lot of the career fairs and different things that we attended. Um, we do have an entire staff of, I shouldn't say entire staff, three people dedicated to our university relations recruiting, um, so they also send, which is another example in my packet, but they will send letters to some of the diverse groups on campus, so ISU and U of I, just to kind of introduce Growmark, let them know, you know, we're open to hiring a diverse staff, and they will include this in that as well. Students are given it at career fairs, any sort of IDES event that we go to, we hand that out, and then anyone that comes in for an interview will also get this. Um, all of our locations do have copies of these. I hope that they're putting it out for people to see if they come in, but um, they should have a spot for it. But usually it's starting at the student level, which is kind of why we revamped it and redesigned it to make it look less ag and more just, hey, this is a sleek brochure. I might want to work at this company because I think a lot of times people or students especially hear of agriculture and they're like, I don't really have that background and they tend to steer clear, not realizing that we do have some non-ag type positions as well. And I'm sorry, I don't mean to dominate the questions, okay. but this is a lot of, of great interest to me. So yeah. do you do any of the um, community college like Parkland, um, Danville, mm -hmm. area community college? Yep, so we actually have two different internship programs. We have one that's geared to, to a four-year student, so that's just our Growmark internship. Um, and those range from finance, agronomy, energy, accounting, you know, the whole gamut of it. And we also have what's called our Exploring Ag Internship that is for community college students. Um, so I know we do a lot with Parkland, with DAC, uh, sorry, Danville Area Community College, um, and then just some local community colleges as well. Um, we are looking to expand that internship, but it's only three years old. So we do kind of have a limited number of those students that we're, we're accepting, but we do a lot with the community colleges. Okay. And I'm bringing that up because I know the University of Illinois is a huge university. There are mm -hmm. a lot of departments and different programs. Mm -hmm. um, and there are some specific programs for minority students. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just wondering with job fairs, even though there's a U of I career fair, the percentage of, you know, how many minority students may actually attend those versus if there was some outreach when they have specific events. Yeah, and we actually do, do a lot with Manners, the Manners chapter at U of I, okay. um, the Minorities in Agriculture and other Natural Resource Related Sciences. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Jesse Thompson is their chair for that. Okay. We work very closely with him. We actually just hired our first Growmark intern for summer of 2018 that is from the IH, or from the U of I Manners chapter, okay. um, which Excellent. is pretty exciting. That's a big, a big win for us. And we actually started a Manners chapter at ISU as well in Bloomington with Dr. Thompson's help. He kind of helped coordinate that and then Growmark um, sponsored that chapter as well. So we do try to reach out to some of those more specific groups because we realize that not everyone is going to come to the all school career fair, but um, you know, a lot of times it's just we don't know what we don't know. And so any like examples or um, references that you have would be great, okay. especially because so U of I is so large. So if you leave your contact information, yeah. um, I think if people know about it, they could at least send an invite to you all mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to let you know about events. And sometimes even if you can't be there physically, 
they'll ask you to send materials that they can put out. Yeah. So. Yeah, and we've done that a couple times if we're unable to attend an event. Um, we will just send, like I said, some recruiting brochure okay. so they have that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Cecilia. Sorry, please. No, that's okay. Go ahead. Kirsten, you mentioned that for the uh, Illini. FS. FS. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Here in Urbana, mm -hmm. that most of your hiring is seasonal positions, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. And that, and temporary. Laborers. Correct. And laborers. Correct. So, how do you go about recruiting for that demographic of an applicant? And that's, I mean, that's a million dollar question. That's something that we're, we're struggling with. We um, don't get enough applicants and enough hires every year that we would like so typically someone's doing two or three jobs just because we don't get the applicants whether they're diverse or not we just it's a hard hard position to fill in general so we definitely are more traditionally reactive when it's coming to fill those because we are based on the seasons we're based on weather our industry so you know we can't say you're going to start on the stakes if it's raining that week we got to push it back and a lot of people don't um, want to wait they want to have consistency in the job which I get but we just we're so weather dependent season to season when it comes to harvest and planting and different things like that but um, so yeah we are trying new new methods like mm -hmm. I talked about we're doing more of the Facebook ads we're doing LinkedIn which doesn't go as much to those seasonal type positions but we're doing a whole new campaign on Facebook for this fall um, season we actually just are in the process of completing that so we'll have more metrics for that probably in the beginning of the year um, in 2018 but it's something you know, we, we struggle with okay. to fill those. What, what period of time generally are you looking for to hire seasonals? Yep, so um, what we'll usually do is we post all of our seasonal positions in January um, to try to get, you know, interested applicants, get that process started, kind of get them on board so that way once it is time for planting. Um, but I would say that's usually more of like the March, April time frame. Mm -hmm. And then the fall harvest is obviously going to start usually the September October time frame but whether the past few years has been a little crazy we've had some late snows and some earlier um, or later warmer weather so it's definitely fluctuates a little bit it's usually the spring and the fall okay would you have an interest in perhaps the Commission focusing on this aspect of your hiring and maybe offer some suggestions on what you could yeah possibly that do? would be that would be great um, we do uh, seasonal time try to do a lot more with IDES but I think because our positions are so um, skilled and do require some certifications there's some great applicants mm -hmm. but they just don't have necessarily what we're what we're looking for so yeah I would love any sort of recommendations or help that you can provide for the those seasonal type positions okay. and that's pretty much all that you focus on at a line FS and I think probably what would help us in the future as we look at your documentation, mm -hmm. yeah. there is a section that you can fill out that is specific to Urbana that okay. asks how many employees are actually going to work in so Urbana. So just Urbana, because I think traditionally I just fill out all of mm -hmm. Illini numbers, which mm -hmm. I know can be kind of skewed because our that spans, you know, five different counties. So if yeah. you want, I can just do Illini numbers. Yes, that would or, be. Or I mean Urbana numbers mm -hmm. for future. Okay, okay. I just yeah. have one more sort of comment slash question yeah. uh, because I just met with the young lady over at IDES a couple of weeks ago. They do have some specific certification programs and I don't know if you guys are a part of that er at all. Okay. Are you aware of those? Um, Where they do the, some of them are two year programs, some of them may be one year, but the folks can go through a sort of a job training program um, but also get some experience as they're earning the certifications. Is it kind of like an apprenticeship program? Similar to okay, that, but okay. when you're done, you actually have a certification for a specific oh, job skill. Okay. No, so, I was not aware. Was that Danita um, Lust that you talked to? Or? She's, I, I can't remember her name, but I can get the information because I yeah. think if, you, if you're saying you need people with a specific skill set, mm -hmm pairing up with them to create a certification program mm -hmm. so they can start pre helping to 
create that workforce with you. Yeah, no, that would um, be great. And I'm sorry, yes, her name is escaping me. She was a wonderful young lady. <laughs> but I was, I was meeting with her for another program um, okay. for some of the young um, minority men in the community who have difficulty getting jobs because they have felonies. So, but I, in, through that meeting, she talked about some of the certificate programs they have, mm -hmm. which I think is excellent, especially for that workforce. Um, some of those guys are looking for extra work in addition to jobs they have because they don't earn that much money. Yeah. So they may be interested in a seasonal job mm -hmm. to add on in the fall. Yeah, no, that would be great. I would love that contact. Yeah, and we do, so we have in the past done um, a somewhat apprenticeship program where we will hire someone who maybe doesn't have the necessary certification but we think they would be a great worker and a good fit you know so then we'll pay for that certification so that's something that we will do and have done but seasonal time just because usually yeah you need them right away to kind of get in the fields and get going but um yeah that would be great okay so and we i'll have get no your information from yeah Vasilia okay. and i'll try and link the two of you because that's something she was saying they don't typically have enough folks Mm -hmm. that are offering a certificate type of okay. deal and they they want to expand that. Yeah. Lisa. Well, Vasilia, you summed a lot of it up, so did Carol, so thank you guys. For, um, one clarifying question, sure. what does IDES stand oh, for? Oh, I'm sorry, it's the Illinois Department of Employment Security, so it's the Illinois Job Link, it's kind of the state workforce agency for the state of Illinois. Um, so Danita Lust is our contact, I think, here in Urbana and Vermilion. Um, I think she's Champaign and Vermilion County. And then we have, like, Tori Davis and then Tom Pinnell and Bob. Oh, his last name starts with the W. Don't ask me to, <laughs> to say okay. it, but they're in the Peoria office. Ever That's fine. But, we, I mean, we do a lot with them, kind of our local contacts, but we could probably do some additional programs like you mentioned. Peter. <coughs> Yeah, and th you may not have the answer, but someone else up here might. Um, do you have a sense of, because you said uh, um, for licensure, I mean, CDL, hazmat, mm -hmm. pesticide, forklift, driver. Yeah. Um, is there a diversity problem in folks with those licenses at the current time? I mean, there's a problem just with anyone wanting to be, for example, a CDL driver. There is a huge shortage. If you get your CDL certification, you can kind of name your salary really coming out of the training so I would say yes to that question but also yes to just anyone going into the skilled trades in general I think is just a big issue um, so those, that goes back to exactly what you're and talking I can about. tell you in the meeting that I had um, Parkland is actually revamping a couple of their programs because they thought that they were equipping people with the skills like they were doing a forklift mm -hmm. program where you actually never got to practice driving a forklift. <laughs> and so the employers would not hire people who had that certificate because they didn't have the practical experience. So Parkland actually agreed to revamp their program um, because they were just doing a virtual forklift training, um, which is not the same as actually doing it. And so they are actually working with our local WorkNet center over on Mattis to revamp that program so that people going through it actually can get a job when they're done. So that's just one example. Yep. And I would say that is a great example. And we've been approached by some colleges, community colleges, to kind of help revamp some of their ag programs or their more certificate-based programs because we are finding that you know they're turning out students with these certificates but they're not meeting what we need as an employer and so there's kind of that gap you know how do we bridge between what the schools are doing and what the employer needs so I myself sit on three different college advisory kind of employer advisory committee panels to provide some of that input so but to answer your question Peter I mean there's just a a huge need in general for a lot of those skilled skilled positions. Yeah. Hi. Cecilia. You mentioned hazmat. Yes. Now I've only heard the term used in relationship to being a firefighter so can you help me with yeah, that? Yeah so um, the kind of basic is a, a CDL and there's different classes to that um, depending on the type of what you're going to be driving. We require um, a Class A CDL because we do 16-wheeler, so semis. Um, a hazmat is a hazardous material endorsement, and that basically allows you to haul 
hazardous materials. So for us, it's going to be fuel. It's going to be anhydrous ammonia. It might be propane. Um, so we require, even if our drivers aren't necessarily on a day-to-day -day driving those materials, we do require that they have it just in case they need to. Um, but yeah, that's what that refers to. Okay. So are your drivers required to have a certain number of years of experience? Um, no, typically not. We don't require the experience, but because we do require some additional endorsements like the hazmat and then the um, tanker truck, which is, again, just the type of truck, it usually comes with more experience because a lot of times someone will go to an employer and the employer will pay for them to get that, um, which is something that we do as well, is we'll pay for them to get, if they have just their CDL, but we need them to haul some hazardous materials, we'll pay, it's usually just a written test to get that in a safety. It's more so they know how to handle it properly. Okay, thank you. Yeah. For Brianne, are there any uh, high school internships or training programs that young people could in, uh, get themselves involved in during the summer months? Yeah, so I will say, um, because of the nature of our work, a majority of the positions that we hire for you have to be at least 18. Um, if not, you get into the work permit, and there's just a little more, a little more things you have to deal with with that. But we do, um, in Bloomington, have a high school program. It's an eight-week paid summer program for um, high school students and our local high schools to kind of come into our home office, work a job, and they actually get college credit to Heartland Community College through that program. Um, and that is geared toward more diverse students as well. Um, but again, that's in Bloomington. We have not been able yet to roll that out to our retail level, but we're looking to do that. Yeah. Oh, oh sorry. No. <laughs> okay, but I'm fine. That was loud. That was here. Pardon me. Um, but we do offer, I guess, kind of in conjunction with that, we do job shadows for high school or college students. We do a formal job shadow program, but we also do informal job shadows at any time. So if a student walks in and just says, hey, I want to learn, you know, about X, Y, Z or about this position, as long as, you know, there's no safety hazards, obviously ride-alongs, you have to, there's some additional kind of legal forms you have to have filled out, but we will do job shadows for the students or for anyone who really just kind of wants to learn more about what we do. Peter. I just want to say, I, I mean, we generally get the form yeah. and, it, you know, and sometimes just the numbers across the rows. Yeah. Um, it, it's great for folks like you, and, and this is sort of sending a message to other folks, to hear what kinds of things you're doing and what kinds yeah. of things you need help with. Mm -hmm. um, one of our missions is to sort of reach out to different organizations, so whether it's you know, union shops, getting more folks into the union, <laughs> into those trades, mm -hmm or do kind you know, work with folks to get the right kinds of training programs. So I, I do want to express my appreciation for you coming down and sort of telling us why the numbers are so funky. Yeah, no, and I appreciate it because like you said, you just see the, the numbers and what we put on paper, but there's so much more <laughs> behind it that we're trying to do. And anytime we can kind of get some local community partners or assistance, you know, we will take it. Is there anything else you'd like to share we kind of we did start asking questions. I don't know if you were finished. No, you're totally. fine. No, I am finished. Um, I will just kind oh, I'm of. I'm sorry, Samuel. Yeah, I just had, uh, yeah. One question. I know you've talked a lot about uh, recruitment, and so my question is more along the lines of retention. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I'm just wondering what has your staff looked like in terms of uh, diversity in its uh, context before, and from those staff who may have transitioned on, have you found any way to identify? or assess um, the culture of the organization that you're in? Yeah. Um, no, that's a, that's a really good question. So we are, like I mentioned, an agriculture company. So it is a traditionally not diverse industry, and that's something that I'm working towards, and um, some of my colleague or colleagues are working towards, is to be a more inclusive environment. So yes, obviously we struggle with getting those diverse applicants and getting them in the door, but once we do, how do we make them feel included? So we actually have gone through um, an internal kind of diversity and inclusion program task force, so to say, to kind of shift our culture at 
Gromart and at Align IFS to try to change that culture and that mindset. And so all of our employees are going through what's called connecting with others. That's our diversity and inclusion training at the home office. And then, like I mentioned, Align I will also go through that by the end of 2018. Um, but we are just really trying to recognize all employees as the individuals that they are and just the contributions that they bring to the company to hopefully retain them for the future. And we're looking at making some additional policies as well around that. So like I mentioned, we have um, updated our military leave policy and kind of what we offer individuals who are serving in the military. We have are looking at a parental leave policy um, for not just moms, but for dads or for anyone, any sort of family leave. And then we also um, have updated our um, PTO policy as well. We did that, I think it was a few years ago. We kind of modified that to give some more, more PTO. Does that answer your question? <laughs> I guess uh, I'm asking, has, has your um, company been a diversity in any way in the way that you self-assess? Mm -hmm. um, I guess what, what results are you finding? And I understand you're saying we're, we're making efforts mm -hmm. to put a variety of practices or procedures in place. And so I guess then my question is, how do you assess whether that's effective and what that looks like? Yeah, I mean, so we, that's a really good question, and it's, it's definitely a slow-going process in terms of our diversity numbers. Um, I went back and pulled the 2010 numbers that we submitted to the commission, and so from 2010 to today, our numbers have increased, but in the years in between, they've kind of fluctuated, um, just some ebbs and flows, but, you know, I think attainment takes time, and we're hoping that by just doing this outreach and becoming more well-known in the communities that our applicant pool does diversify, so then hopefully our internal employee base also then reflects that, that applicant pool. Did I answer your question? Thank you. Am I, if I not, I'm not answering no, it. I, I guess I'm, I'm trying to be precise in saying when you talk about retention, that's one aspect. Mm -hmm. uh, and recruitment is another. Mm -hmm. So if it is that we, or you've looked at what uh, retention looks like, how have you surveyed the existing staff and what does that culture entail? And then how have those practices that you've implemented either shifted or changed that culture? Oh, other okay. than saying it, it actually is something. Sure. So we do um, every other year like an employee engagement survey, which within that survey <coughs> has four different targeted kind of diversity and inclusion questions. So do you feel that, um, just as an example, I think one of the questions is, do you feel that your supervisor is open to your diverse opinions or thoughts? Do you feel that this is a diverse company? Has the culture shifted? So every other year we do the big survey, and then in between years we do kind of a mini pulse survey. Um, so we are looking to measure that, and actually as a company-wide initiative this year, we are looking to increase our engagement scores. Um, so it's something that we are surveying. We're looking at those numbers, and then we're putting um, SMART goals around it, behind it, to kind of get some actionable outcomes. And have you, do you have any preliminary findings? Um, it, this is the first year we've done it, so I don't, I don't have anything yet. I wish I did. <laughs> well, thank you. That's did that answer? Okay. <laughs> okay. Does that include Illini FS here yes. in Urbana? Yes. Mm -hmm. So retails have their own um, employee engagement survey. Okay. Yep. So we'll be able to, to talk to that more in the future. Okay. And just one other question. Is that anonymous feedback? It is. Yes, it is. So um, the employee information that's provided is not able to trace back to the employee who submits it. So any sort of comments. Unless they want to put their name in the comment box, but most people don't. So I would only offer this as a, a suggestion. Yeah. If it is that you know you're in a company or uh, organization that is less diverse uh, racially or any other way that you look at it, and you, you were provided with anonymous feedback, that may not until um, provide you with a really good indicator in terms of the actual culture, culture mm -hmm. for those individuals who may be uh, historically or traditionally marginalized. Okay. Okay. And I think our, I would say that our thought with the having it be anonymous is the hope that people will be more transparent versus 
you know, if your name's attached to it, you there's still kind of that stigma, even though it is an employee engagement survey and, you know, there's language in it that nothing, obviously won't be retaliated against for what you say. There is still the thought that if I say something, you know, my supervisor, someone above them might kind of retaliate against me. So I think that's why we went with the making it anonymous is just so there was more um, ability for people to kind of say what they were thinking. Yeah, I think it's, um, when you talk about an inclusive environment, it's really an inclusive board and being purposeful in that. And there may be different uh, survey instruments that are required to maybe meet the particular goals that you're wanting if you're wanting it to be an inclusive environment for those with the resources and the know-how. Okay. So again, we'd love, you know, anything else you'd like to share, please? No, I mean, that's kind of everything that I had outlined um, in this packet that I will leave for, okay. for your review. I have paper copies, and then there's a flash drive for electronic as well. And then I think you all have our last, um, yeah. inform the, our last EEO certificate that we submitted in September with all the numbers, so. Are there any final questions, comments from the, pan uh, from the commission or from our guest? Okay, so again, uh, thank you so much for coming in. This yeah. was really uh, in, in light, informative. Thank you for having me. And, uh, and then um, I think Valencia can share my contact information. So, Carol, Please. or if anyone has anything you want to send me. Please, if I you could. Look at, and I'll leave a copy of our nice brochure. <laughs> we would. All right, thank you again. Thank you. All righty, um, moving on to uh, uh, sadly some new business. We, we made it into the uh, the 24 national, the 24 hours news cycle for a day or two, at least on a couple websites that I, uh, national Not websites, or, excuse boss. me, <laughs> Suburban Express, these, these folks put Urbana on the map for about a day or two. So. Our community, not us, excuse me. Sorry. Um, what did we do? <laughs> so, um, uh, if you don't know, I'll just give a quick Cliff's Notes, very quick synopsis. This organization put out some marketing material uh, that was blatantly racist um, um, yep. in trying, I think, uh, did they claim they were trying to be funny? Or uh, they probably went to the humor excuse at some point, but anyway. Um, they, they did they did a couple of things that were, mm -hmm. were, were were failures but they um, um, uh, directed some uh, some vitriol towards um, uh, many of our uh, Asian uh, students Asians uh, um, uh, Asian American and interna Asian international students um, uh, and some really nasty uh, some really nasty language I thought Sorry, I personalized it there for a second excuse me I shouldn't do that so um, Historically, this commission um, has often uh, got involved, at least uh, through statements, through through other things, through inviting people in to, to talk. So, um, Vasilia, sorry, I didn't get back to you. I just got your message, but uh, she asked that we uh, add this to the uh, to the agenda for discussion tonight. And and how, what, if anything, and how we'd like to respond. So, uh, opening it up to the floor here um, to discuss. So I'll just add before Carol. we start our discussion, because I, I read the article, um, a couple of articles related to the incident, the advertising, saw the actual advertising. Um, this particular company and the owner have a history of Support engaging of in behavior and making comments that are not inclusive, um, that are antagonistic. Um, they have a um, love-hate relationship with the <laughs> community slash university. So it's, this, this incident is the latest in a long line of incidents. Um, and so I think it's just that the climate we are in as a nation has emboldened some people to become even more blatant with their stuff. 
I'll put it that way. So I just wanted to put provide some context that this is not an isolated that's, incident. That's important. It's just the most recent and probably the most blatant um, expression of the, how the, I think it's coming from the ownership of that company. Thank you, Carol. Peter. I, I will say that on the plus side of this incident, um, the company is in Champaign uh, based, not Urbana. That's right. <laughs> for for whatever that's worth. It was also nice to see that after the national press coverage started to set in, uh, national and, and statewide coverage started to set in, that it looked like, was it the Attorney General's office um, uh, was planning on doing an investigation. And uh, it, it's nice to see the, the bigger guns come out when this sort of nonsense happens and it doesn't just have to be our little local uh, uh, engagements that try and get this dealt with. So um, that was uh, very nice to see and, and comments by folks in Champaign. Um, I am more than happy for us to make a statement about this. Uh, it, it's the kind of thing that we should bring additional attention to. On the other hand, this is one of them that I feel like it's not as um, emergent because there are so many other people talking about it on a much big, broader scale. Um, so if we can say something, that would be nice, um, but it's not something I think we need to rush out the door or feel like we're the only ones making some noise about this. Love to hear from Fran. I'm, that, this is the first time I've seen this document and I, I was just wondering about the, what in, endorsement entails the endorsers um, I mean can we be an endorser or is that not appropriate in some way Interesting. who are these people <coughs> you ha have to be something or other their criteria yeah, yeah but it's these people familiar. that are expressing do yeah. you think for the people at home because I know you're all out there watching. Um, we could explain what we're looking at. <laughs> My husband's watching, I know he is. Um, do you want to go ahead? Okay, sure. Thanks. Um, this is yes, a. Um, well, here's some mention of. This is a, a declaration uh, or a statement uh, by the Illinois <laughs> student government of the University of Illinois at Urbana Champaign. Uh, it's from the Senate of the Illinois student government. And it is a, a uh, condemnation of Suburban Express um, uh, for, for this incident. And it has many, uh, it, has, it, it documents and supports its resolution to um, take certain actions. And we haven't really discussed them here in this meeting, but um, in a general spirit of, of solidarity and support ag against uh, discriminatory statements and abuses, um, I'm just que questioning whether we could be one of the endorsers uh, because there are endorsers listed. There's an author, sponsors, and endorsements. Are any of the endorsements known on the campus? Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I said that with my mic off. No, but they seem to the be all. They seem to be all associated. Campus. So campus. maybe I, I don't know that um, y this might just be Senate specific Senate right from so, but there may be other avenues in which we can right show I, our I'm support. making a statement of endorsement I think would be a, yeah. a okay. fine thing mm -hmm. um, I uh, Dan pointed out to me that one of their resol part of the resolution is that the City Council of Urbana should look into the business that they're doing in Urbana yes one of their resolutions is um, that we receive a copy of this for example right. or the city does and uh, so there is room here for an action on our part, I think. Yeah. <clears throat> well, it's interesting. There's a 
recommending sending it to the city yes right mm -hmm. they're recommending and then June, uh, yeah. yeah but yeah I think certainly one option would be a a statement from the Commission mm -hmm. endorsing or um, supporting yeah. the this this action yeah, it could I'm be just that. It could also just, it could also, I know we do this a lot, but it could just be further, just, I know we, I always like to just remind people we're here, you know, in all of our mm -hmm. communications yep. as well. Mm -hmm. So there could be also be some of our broader language about inclusiveness, uh, diversity, inclusivity, mm -hmm. in inclusiveness, I can't speak anyway. Inclusivity? Inclusiveness. <laughs> so yeah, that's well. A, those are options. I'm not, I'm not trying to steer right. us any one way. Just. Well, we have to, I think it's important to say, what the nature of our solidarity is here Absolutely. and how it how it's part of our mission Absolutely. Uh, because like this isn't necessarily it must be a free speech issue we you know but we regardless of that we can have a moral stand and uh, about things including the the tone and atmosphere of relations human relations in our city and on those grounds I think we can speak and I was thinking that um, you and I were on the same page because I think we could make a statement of support and at the same time remind people that they they do have um, a placed uh, entity that they can turn to if they feel that they have been discriminated against or mistreated when it comes to a public com accommodations and obviously writing um, that transportation service is a public um, accommodation so I think we could do twofold a statement of support and then just a reminder that and I don't know if we want to do something joint with champagne that so people know that we both have a relations com human relations commission and here is what we're here for um, and whether that would be something we would do on in the newspaper or on the public TV channel or a combination of both um. yes yeah, certainly we'd want the our uh, whatever voice we voice here to be known to the campus because those are the people who mainly we're concerned about right now their their rights and their comfort level uh, so Peter. being that I'm lousy at producing such things I I will likely not volunteer myself by asking this question, but why don't um, we, uh, uh, one or two of us, produce such a statement um, and at least informally get consensus around it if we think we're gonna approve it next meeting, and if so, send it over to Champagne and see if they would like to join us in that statement. I am- and one of I do, Carol, because remember we had, a, we had that wonderful meeting uh, with Champagne's uh, HRC folks, mm -hmm. what about half a year ago, a year ago, and we were talking about more outreach together. So I think it was a wonderful idea. We should things have gotten in the way, but yeah, pick up that sort of initiative that we talked about. It's perfect. It's right in the middle. Yep. <laughs> the city, I, I'm sorry. I certainly uh, I agree with everything you guys are, are discussing in terms of just sending out a reaffirmation of our purpose, uh, encouraging anyone who feel that they have been unfairly treated by this particular company to contact our office and we will take it from there. Um, Champagne is also very engaged in this and I've been working with Rachel uh, Joy from the city of Champaign and uh, I think if we can get a draft of some sort that I can share with her and, and and ask her if they too would like to join us in this joint statement. Uh, that would be a great idea. Do, do we have anything uh, like this we can draw from from the past? Yeah. Well, I was, I, yeah. Okay. I've written a couple. Mm -hmm. I'll take the. I'll, I'll take a pass at the first draft. Okay. Well, okay. I'd be happy to participate in the okay. wording and uh, absolutely everything. So uh, it's will, my kind of we'll, thing. <laughs> we'll we'll I'll, I'll, uh, we'll I know I at least have I know I at least have a couple statements, Fran. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll start by just sending those to you. Okay. That's okay, and then. Super. 
Yeah. Again, we'll see how much. I don't know exactly how much, but we'll, they'll okay. give us a. And, a, a, and a, there's a, the thing I wrote. A blueprint. Uh, and then there's after that, the election. Absolutely. So there's that can, too. That absolutely. was a similar kind that's of. That's very, I forgot. That's. Yeah. We might be pulling from that. <laughs> sure. Did we write one for Ferguson? We did, I believe. And support. Yeah, I think uh, there's a lot there's, we can do, and I think. And we've got a couple. I, I think I wrote one when uh, the guy put the videos on UPD oh. way back when. So, okay. so we got a couple. We got a couple samples. We got some samples. <laughs> so yeah, Fran and I will get okay. we'll, we'll get that going. And uh, thank you. Absolutely. No, thank. Um, Great. Oh. Our new members, do you have anything you want to add to the discussion or any We're thoughts? A fast and furious sometimes. <laughs> uh, no. Okay. I agree with everything you guys are saying. Thank so, you. Yeah. Okay. Could I just, did, 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 did this story get, make it, did, did the high school, were you guys talking about this at all? Do you know what? Actually, I wasn't really aware of this. Okay, that's until, fine. That's, that's yeah, good until to know. Until now, just, but like, okay, so I actually do have a question. So like, um, you guys say that it's been happening in the past, like they had like history of like saying like race, like racial things. So like, um, is it like how like, what does it take for them to like be like accountable for like be held accountable for what they're saying I know like coming out and saying a statement but then it's also like it's like targeting against like especially the campus it's really like really diverse when it comes to like Asian Americans and international students and so like that also like if they they're like coming to this campus to get an education and like transportation you know is their big thing to get around and so I feel like if like this keep continues to keep happening then like like people won't you know want to come to the University of Illinois so like what like how far in it like you know like how far does it take for them to actually be held accountable so yeah Good. well apparently uh, we're getting close <laughs> <laughs> so one thing that we, and we should do this from time to time is um, take a look at different pieces of our ordinance while we're having these meetings for public education but also our own. Um, so we have no control over things that go on by the campus itself because they're a state agency. However, this is a city business. Now they're in Champaign, so Champaign's ordinance would rule, but they're pretty close. And, and they have some pickups in Urbana, so I mean, there's, absolutely. There's, there's yeah. some so there's some in, crossover. There's some, it's not perfect, but yeah. right. Um, but our ordinance basically says you cannot advertise in a way that indicates that you would discriminate. Um, and so if someone were to bring a complaint and say this advertisement that they put out shows that they are discriminating, um, they could bring that to the city and Vasilia would do a review of the case and if she thinks that it has merit it can be brought before the commission as a, as a case of discrimination and we can fine them or we can tell them that they need to change their business practice or whatever it is. Um, so yeah, we should uh, at different points go over different parts of the ordinance because we have more teeth than I think most of the community knows. And I think, I think the campus has taken some of those previous incidents. I think they've restricted some of their access to the campus. So I mean, there has been some, again, that's, it certainly hasn't deterred this company from continuing their behavior, but I think there's been some subtle actions, but I think they finally got the, the, both town and the university sort of, they've gotten a lot of folks' <coughs> attention. So, great questions. Anything else regarding um, this order of new business? Oh, I was Please. just going to say, um, in response to what you were saying, actually in the Senate, they're actually calling for a boycott. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yes. So the yeah. university is taking a stand enough, in yeah. terms of boycotting them. And but I think that's one of our things that we can do. If it's a business, we do not need to support that business. I do like what Pete said, though, too. We want to look to see, is this a violation of our, our city <coughs> ordinance? And so when those things do come, I do think it's also a great opportunity for us to frame it in the you know 2017, almost 18, what it looks like what a violation looks like I've been here for quite some time and it it's different um, but this stuff is great to talk about and to get out there so people know that when they go too far you need to come to us and we'll help you out 
Alrighty, so Fran and I will get going on that and uh, look for that in your email in the somewhat near future. We'll get that to you, Vasilia, obviously. Alrighty, um, and speaking of Vasilia, can we, uh, we're going to move on to our next item of business, which is our staff report. Um, so Vasilia, it's, uh, you've got the floor. Where would you like us to begin? For you to begin with the uh, EEO. Okay. I saw we have, uh, sorry. With the recertifications. So we have one new application and I believe eight renewals. Mm -hmm. um, do you want me to go through the list or would you like to um, well, discuss uh, your rec staff recommendations? Well, basically, um, we, like you said, we have one new application and the rest are renewals. And with the exception of one company, uh, we're recommending that oh, uh, they be given two years, all of them, with the exception of that one. Hall signs, <clears throat> pardon me, Hall signs. Mm -hmm. They uh, currently have a 0% uh, minority representation. Mm -hmm. no, they don't. Down from 3% earlier in the year. <laughs> <laughs> so. I, I had that was certainly um, a, a perfectly reasonable choice. The one, the two that I had questions about on Schaefer Systems, um, it looks like their population grew significantly, but all of their minority participation, or almost all of them, dropped. Um, that they did some hiring mm -hmm. and ended up, at least percentage-wise, with less people in the minority categories. And I'm wondering why that happened, <laughs> um, whether there's anything in their literature that explains why that might have happened. The other one on the Homer Tree Care one, um, their overall diversity numbers look great. Their internal diversity numbers look at best interesting. Um, <laughs> say, say more, Pete. Well, they, the, all of their diversity is made up of Latino workers. Mm -hmm. um, so they have 67 total employees, 47 of which are Latino, and no other category identified, including no women, interestingly enough. Um, and and I, I'd be curious why that happened. This is, a, as far as I can tell, a Chicago area company. Lockport? It's, out, it's a suburb of Chicago. It's only got 25,000 people. Um, uh, the, the city itself that they are located in is very white. Um, but that doesn't explain where all of these Latino workers are coming from. Uh, so obviously they're getting from outside town population itself. Um, I, I just found the numbers strange. Do we have anything on either of those two? No. <laughs> oh, um, Monique has some information yeah. about Schaefer. So Schaefer's numbers last year were actually not accurate, but I couldn't change them to the actual ah. numbers because I had to go based off of what you all had last year. Right. Um, so their numbers weren't accurate at all. And when I was looking at the numbers and adding everything up, they actually weren't too far off from okay. where they are right now. Um, so yeah, that's what would end up happening. You guys can go back and the citizens will go back and if I change those numbers right. to what they actually needed to be um, last year, they're, they're not too far off at okay. all. Okay, good, 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 good. Thanks, that helps a lot. But Homer Tree Care? Homer Tree Care, I just, I, I mean, I don't know what we do about cases like this. This is one of the oddball ones and we have these from time to time where if we just look at the overall minority participation, they look woman. just fine. And if we look at the internal numbers, it, they, something strange is going on and it would be nice to know what before we say, oh yeah, for two years you guys look wonderful, thank you very much. Well, it can be just a, a sociological <coughs> phenomenon. Absolutely. That this is an area that a certain group of people have found success in and so other, it's like moving to a community where to, such an, you know they move to a certain area because they know people or whatnot, and it it just happens. Um, I I do think it's interesting what should be our attitude to to a phenomenon like this. Yeah. I mean, is it great or is it less than great? I mean, there are arguments on both sides. 
of that, yeah. I think. Particularly that they have no women, um, given that even if it's a Latino phenomenon. That's been very dangerous. Okay. Yeah. Are there any other questions about um, uh, organizations who are already under discussion or others on our, um, our list? Fran. I just wanted to say that this was one of the least depressing uh, <laughs> reports I've ever That's seen. Cool, yeah. <laughs> so it made me think, you know, are we making a difference? So, yeah. Pete, regarding um, uh, Homer, would you like a year and ask for more information, six months, or, or not push off for a month and say, could you help us explain? Or I think something's coming around, actually, too, that might. I, I don't have a, I mean, yeah, I'm happy to take ideas here because I really don't know what the right thing to do is. So on this document, they actually have Homer Tree Care Incorporated. They have five white females, office and clerical. Weren't they? Oh, and it didn't make the... Got it. So I'll pass this on down, but is that is that the sheet that was in the packet? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I've got that online. <laughs> and the breakdown is again looking at the numbers on the sheet awfully interesting because of course we have four white male officials and managers three white male sales workers five well and I think it it's probably white yeah five white female office and clerical and then all of the craft operatives laborers and service uh, 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 well there are no service workers but all of the rest are Latino and Latino men um, and so my, my, the first thing that comes to my mind, how my mind works, <laughs> is it is about dollars and savings and what can I employ this group of individuals for maybe at a cheaper labor rate than the rest of the employment market. And That's my best guess. I, I think there's probably, and we do have the International Society of Arboriculture in town here. Um, it would be interesting. I wonder if we're also seeing that possibly some of these folks are migrant farm workers who work tree care in the off season. I, and it could be any number of explanations um, for you know uh, why those numbers are coming up. And I don't know if we should care about it. I really don't. Um, I, it's interesting. I hear you. It's, it's tough. It's tough. So I hear you, but yet, I don't, how often do we see 70% minority? I mean, again, I know it's problem. I know it, I, not problem. I know it, I hear what you're saying. I don't know what, yeah. Hmm. Does staff have any thoughts on this? Uh, j just to stick it to you instead of sticking it to us? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, I know that some of our former employees, arborists here, and tree specialists have left here to go and start their own small businesses. Mm -hmm. And I, when I look at this, I, that's pretty much the conclusion I come to, is that this is just a, a small upstart kind of business. I'm not sure if one of the areas that they did not provide us was how many people were gonna actually be doing the, the Urbana work. Sure. So, I, I, I and that makes a big difference. I, they get those are their total numbers, but how many people are actually going to be doing the Urbana work is what we really need to focus on, and what that diversity looks like, in my opinion. So, um, I'm inclined to it to at least uh, approve a year for them. Okay. Well, I'm happy to make a motion. Um, mm -hmm. Please. Uh, this is why. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I think I like the suggestion of doing one year, which is not saying you guys are doing a bad thing. It's saying 
we'd like to hear more information about what these numbers mean, or you can frame the letter to them, I suppose, mm -hmm. in that particular way. So I, I'd like to make a motion that we approve Homer Tree Care for one year, um, Hall signs for six months, and then um, is it Michelle's Corporation or Michael's Corporation, Schaefer Systems International, Cross Construction, Ileana Construction, Varsity strip, Striping and Construction, Via or Via, Via. and Champagne Signal and Lighting uh, Company, all for two years. So moved. Is there a second? I second. Any final discussion, questions, comments? Alrighty. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed the same. All right, thank you all. Celia, where would you like to go to next? Okay. Let's talk about the HRO activity report. Unfortunately, I, I was not able to, to provide you a written report this month, but I do have a summary of my activities. Um, I wanted to let the Commission know that on January 23rd, 2018, uh, the Mayor will be hosting a community uh, forum at the Civic Center from 530 <coughs> probably until 8. We're going to have uh, a light dinner for people since it's right after <coughs> folks are getting off work. The purpose of that meeting is to <coughs> Uh, solicit community input in terms of perceptions and feelings that Urbana residents have about our police, our police practices, our police department, uh, and it's going to be set up where it's more of a focused type of group. It, we're not interested in, and in, we're interested in talking to people about their perceptions of, of our police department in particular and how we could possibly do things a little bit better in the community um, and um, so we're information gathering pretty much at this meeting uh, and it's 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 one of many steps that the mayor plans on taking in trying to improve the overall community police relations in, in Urbana so that's January 23rd at 5.30 at the Civic Center. And we would very much like each of you, if you can, to, to participate because I think it'll be very, very meaningful. Great. Okay? Thank you. Sure. Okay, the other thing is, uh, as it relates to the complaint um, that Urbana has had filed with them, um, I have a housing complaint that has come since we last met and I am going to take a, uh, I'm sorry, not a housing, an employment complaint that has uh, been brought to my attention and I am going to take a formal complaint for this young woman. Mm -hmm. um, we will investigate it. I will work to work within that time frame that we have established in the ordinance. Uh, but I do think that it's enough concern that it's important that I, t I take this complaint and it will be filed under ADA. Um, I do have a housing complaint that I have not completed and it's based in the, the uh, allegation was this person was denied housing based on a conviction record. And I anticipate being done with that in the next couple of weeks. We have completed one of the older cases that we <coughs> discussed uh, at the last couple of meetings, and we ha have one more to go, and I'm anticipating we'll be done with that in about 30 days. Thank you. So n nothing that looks like it's going to come to us for no. here? No, Peter, you Good. can rest easy. <laughs> <laughs> And last but certainly not least, the MLK program is scheduled for January 12th at Vineyard Church. Um, I think that it's going to be very, very, a very successful program. Monique and I have been working very hard on it. Um, Thank you. The theme is 50 years past, 50, no, 50 years forward, or 50 years Okay. 
50 years past, 50 years forward, our future dreamers. And Brianne is, <laughs> is one of the award recipients. We will be giving youth awards this year. And uh, Sally Carter from Tap In is our keynote speaker. We will be having, uh, they've changed their name from Mo Better to B and B, B, B and L, Bridgewater, Banks and Lewis. And it's a fine arts academy now. So they will be providing the entertainment. Right. Um, and Jennifer Roscoe will be our MC. And we will have the invocation and benediction by Lakivi Johnson. Mm. So. Awesome. Thank you. That it? That's it. All righty. Are there any announcements for the uh, end of 2017? Did you? There's something on there. Was, was the, um, I, I thought, was the uh, Civic Center uh, event also the implicit bias training? Or is that something? That was something. That was already done. That's what I thought. Okay, okay that, yeah, right. That was last. Okay. Yeah. And if you was Lisa has Sure. Yeah. So I believe from the commission, we were invited to participate in an, an implicit bias training um, here at the city building. And it was for the police review board. Sorry, I'm making sure I say their, their title correctly. Um, Fran and I attended. Um, Mr. Morris Mosley, my better half, and the, was the presenter. Um, so what was interesting was he, I think he brought a different perspective, but listening to the police bias training, one, they've had a lot of training, and, and I think they're ready to act, which was great to see, um, and just kind of um, bringing that awareness and, and the next steps, I think, is, is where I was interested to see where it could go for the city. I think it was just presented to that committee initially. Vasily, you might know more <coughs> of the structure yeah. of the plan, but um, as far as what the next steps would have been, but I think that was just the first step was to talk about it, that it exists. How would we train? Um, looking at that bias is natural in all of us. It's why I picked this sweater today. It's why you pick what you want to eat. We all have it. We should recognize it, own it, be aware of it, and especially when you're in the role of a police officer and you're interacting with our community, one, as a safety, but also, you, you know, you have to look at your own safety. You, those biases come into place, and we need to be really clear on that. So was that it in a nutshell? Yeah. 30-second version. Thank you both. All righty. Um, Happy New Year, everybody. Happy we'll New see Year. you in 2018. Hope everyone has a nice um, holiday season. And uh, be well. And uh, this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>